In a presentation a few years ago, Elon outlined his plans for Starship, which included three versions, Block 1, 2, and 3. Starship version 2 has completed two flights, both of which ended in disappointment. Looking at the Block 3 design reveals several features that could address the issues Block 2 is facing. This raises the question, why not skip version 2 and go straight to version 3? Let's explore that today. So, what exactly is Starship 5.3? Block 3 is the final version of Starship, at least according to SpaceX's official plans. The most striking feature of this version, even to those with no prior knowledge of the ship, is its sheer size. Standing at an impressive 69.8 metres tall, Starship version 3 is nearly 20 metres taller than both V1 and V2. While Block 2 only saw a modest increase in height compared to Block 1, it did boost its fuel capacity by 25%. Block 3, however, is set to take that fuel capacity up to 53% compared to Block 2. Together with Super Heavy, the ship will have a total height of up to 150 metres, and this will allow it to carry more than 200 tonnes of cargo into orbit. This cargo capacity is extremely important to SpaceX's goals. Of course, the ability to carry more people to Mars is always a nice thing to have, but in the future, Starship will carry two main things regularly, Starlink and fuel. With Starlink, the company is building a global network of satellites designed to provide internet access to even the most remote areas. Since these satellites require regular replacement, Starlink missions will remain essential for maintaining the network. For Starship to carry out deep space missions, it must be refueled in orbit. This makes the establishment of a Starship fuel station in space crucial, along with the need to transport fuel to it. A Starship with a larger cargo bay would streamline this process by reducing the number of trips to the fuel station, ultimately lowering the overall cost. Sure, a larger Starship offers many advantages, but the real question is, how do you get something that massive off the ground, let alone into space? Currently, Block 2 is still using Raptor 2, which is a very good engine, but it does not have enough thrust to lift a monster like Starship 3. The latest generation of engines SpaceX is developing is the Raptor 3. Raptor 3 is designed to ultimately achieve 300 tons of thrust in its booster sea level configuration. As of August 2024, it had reached 280 tons force with a weight of 1,525 kilograms and a chamber pressure of 350 bar. One of its key goals is to eliminate the need for protective engine shrouds. To achieve this, Raptor 3 relocates much of the plumbing and sensors into the housing wall, where integral cooling and secondary flow circuits run through various sections of the engine. This innovative design eliminates the need for a separate heat shield. On August 2, 2024, Raptor 3 SN1 was unveiled. In addition, many of the bolted joints from Raptor 2 have been replaced with single-piece components. However, this design choice has made servicing more challenging, as some parts are now hidden beneath welded joints. The special thing about Raptor 3 is that it will solve the problem that Starship V2 is facing. The Raptor 3's more compact design effectively reduces attic volume. Moreover, its seemingly simple yet highly sophisticated construction eliminates most joints that could be prone to leakage, significantly reducing the risk of fire or explosion within the attic space. Although SpaceX is still testing the Raptor 3, Elon has repeatedly indicated that Block 3 could be equipped with Raptor 3X or Raptor 4. These are versions that can push the Raptor's capabilities up to 330 or even 350 tons at sea level. These 33 engines installed on the Super Heavy will generate more than 10,000 tons of thrust at takeoff. Not only will Starship 3 have more thrust at liftoff, but its upper stage will also be increased from three to six vacuum engines, making it capable of deep space missions to Mars or even beyond. Along with the upper stage upgrade, Super Heavy will also be a completely different version called Block 3. While this version is undeniably taller, more powerful, and equipped with more propellant, what truly captured my attention and will be crucial in addressing the current limitations of Starship is the upgrade to its hot staging system. 
Following the first Starship test flight, all boosters now feature an additional 1.8 meter tall vented interstage designed to enable hot staging. During hot staging, Super Heavy deactivates all but the three center engines, while the second stage ignites its engines before separation. This allows the second stage to push off from the first stage, providing extra thrust. The vented interstage also includes a dome to protect the top of Super Heavy from the second stage's exhaust. Hot staging allows the rocket to maintain continuous acceleration during separation, making it a more efficient method than traditional stage separation. However, it also causes plume impingement against the booster's shield in the confined interstage space between the booster and upper stage, creating a complex environment that is not yet fully understood. Of course, we need the hot stage ring to protect Super Heavy, as the majority of the exhaust plume is directed at it during separation. However, the current design of the hot stage ring is too short. There is a transient period during Starship engine ignition where a significant pressure spike occurs in the constrained hot staging section. This is accompanied by reflected shock waves that rebound off the hot stage and into the Starship engine compartment. These conditions are likely to be highly chaotic, placing stress on all components of the Starship engine system, including the nozzles, plumbing, engine mounts, and dome bulkhead. Now let's look at the design of Starship 3 again. The hot stage ring has been completely reworked. First, it has been made taller, which will reduce the pressure when separating the stages on both Super Heavy and Starship. Next, it will replace the perforations with a tube truss design, resembling the interstage of the Soviet Soyuz rocket. This design maximizes the exhaust's open cross-section for efficient escape while reducing construction complexity. Finally, it will integrate the ring into the booster, which eliminates the entire separation system. Another interesting thing is that if you look down a bit, you can see that the grid fins have also been lowered away from the hot staging. This is to further protect it from the heat from this process and make it easier to reuse. With all these improvements, Starship Block 3 not only addresses the issues faced by Block 2, but also outperforms all previous versions, establishing itself as a true interplanetary vehicle. However, to make this happen, SpaceX not only needs to develop the ship, but also needs to prepare the facilities to support it. But before we get to that, we need your support. This is my new space channel, and we're on the way to reaching the first 750 subscribers. Hit subscribe now and get ready for an out of this world adventure. You won't be disappointed. Thank you very much. At its current height, Mechazilla at Pad A would not be able to support Block 3. But the tower being installed at Pad B might do the work. In addition to raising the tower's height, they've expanded the travelling block's slots to accommodate seven reeving loops, up from five. While this adjustment may slightly reduce the speed of the arm movements, it significantly boosts the tower's weight capacity. However, the arms themselves will maintain their speed, as SpaceX has shortened them, which should make them quicker. To protect the infrastructure from the 10,000 tonnes of Block 3 takeoff, they are building something called the Flame Trench. A Flame Trench is a structure designed to redirect and dissipate the intense heat flames, and exhaust gases produced by rocket engines or other propulsion systems. Its main purpose is to protect equipment, infrastructure, and the surrounding environment by preventing damage from fiery emissions. Typically, a flame trench works alongside a diverter to create a trench deflector system. In this system, the rocket's flames pass through openings in the launch pad and are directed onto a flame deflector within the trench which extends well beyond the pad. To further reduce noise, a water-based sound suppression system is often used. The diverter itself is made of a heat-resistant material that channels the force of the exhaust gases and flames away from the rocket and surrounding equipment, protecting against the high temperature gases and minimizing the acoustic impact during ignition. SpaceX's flame trench system is somewhat unique compared to others. Like the one used by NASA during the Apollo program, SpaceX employs a dual flame trench design that diverts heat to both sides. This system incorporates numerous steel pipes forming a flame bucket with water flowing through them and being released via small holes along the tubes. 
This design is currently implemented at Massey's and McGregor's new vertical test stands. SpaceX has excavated to the designated trench floor level, where a stabilizing layer of concrete ensures structural integrity and provides a solid foundation. Additionally, the design of the orbital launch mount OLM on Pad B has undergone significant changes. In addition to being equipped with hold-down arms and clamps to secure the Super Heavy booster, similar to the OLM on Pad A, Pad B's OLM is designed as a large square and features a water-cooled steel plate at its topmost level. This cooling system, combined with the dual flame trench design, significantly dissipates the heat generated after each launch, protecting the facility from the immense power of Starship 3's 33 Raptor engines. Once everything is prepared, the next step is to mass-produce this thing. This will be the mission for a new integration facility that SpaceX calls GigaBay. GigaBay is a construction facility soaring 380 feet in height, offering an expansive 46.5 million cubic feet of interior processing space. It encompasses 815,000 square feet of workspace, including ground-level areas, elevated platforms, and a dedicated work and meeting space on the top floor. Designed to support the assembly and refurbishment of Starship and Super Heavy vehicles, GigaBay accommodates rockets up to 81 meters, 266 feet tall. The facility features 24 work cells for integration and maintenance, along with cranes capable of lifting up to 400 US tons. When compared to the Megabay facilities at Starbase, Currently, SpaceX's largest stacking and integration buildings, Gigabay offers more than 11 times the workspace, 19 additional work cells, and more than double the crane lifting capacity. The first Gigabay is under construction next to its Hangar X location at NASA's Kennedy Space Center, Florida, with construction targeted to be complete by August 2nd next year. At the same time, SpaceX is constructing another Gigabay at Starbase in Texas situated next to the Starship Star Factory manufacturing facility. To support the initial Starship launches from Florida, SpaceX is developing a Starship launch and catch site at LC-39A at Kennedy Space Center. This new Starship pad will incorporate insights gained from the first two Starship pads at Starbase. Expanding Starship production and launch operations in Florida will allow SpaceX to significantly boost both the build and flight rates of Starship, which is set to become the world's first fully reusable, rapidly deployable launch vehicle in history.